So today I want to talk to you about the meaning of design and how we can truly embed that get money calm um, across our user experiences. So just before I um, start getting into that really, I wanted to show you um, a video from Google Design and it's based around a product called Google Translate and it really highlights how design can impact on everyday lives. After the village that they live close to was bombed, Imad and Razan packed all their things in a taxi and they fled. When they arrived, they spoke no English. The children, they've had some very painful experiences. They want to overcome that initial fear that they won't know how to communicate because they want to fit in. You're new and, and this is a totally new place and trying to figure things out. There's a lot of shyness and apprehension. The biggest thing that we run into when students come from another country is they're going to struggle because they don't have the language background. Hamoudi, what do you like to learn in school? meaning of, um, to our customers through our experiences that we craft. So just moving on and to give you a bit more context into what a typical design team looks like. So traditionally I'd class myself as a graphic designer but we have many titles now within the design industry. We've got UI designer, interaction designer, UX designer, it's endless, we have a lot of designers. But ultimately we're all working towards the same goal and that here, for me personally, is to create a more harmonised experience across, uh, across our, sorry, for our users. But how do we do this as a team? How do we really deliver on that front mm -hmm. message? And that's by being consistent with our design approach. So I think as a business and as a team, I think we really can acknowledge that we've got some work to do here. So we've got lots of designers within the business and it's how do we join forces to really get that, that customer journey and that user experience um, as tight as we can to, to get that money calm feeling. And one way we're going to do this, moving in, well, it's already started, so the, lever, the, the lovely Gemma has been building out a design system. And as a design system is um, basically a Bible for the designers. And I'm probably preaching to many designers in the room, but for those of you that don't know, it's basically a catalogue a catalog of components, patterns, colours, fonts, images, lots of things that get put into almost a library, so to speak. And we almost see it as that single source of truth. So it's somewhere we can go and pick a mix, and all the designers in <coughs> the business just start to create that brand consistency. So, for example... Jamie might design a component for a vertical, for on channel, and then we might decide actually we might want to use that component across on another channel. And it just saves two designers having to create that same component, and that's where inconsistencies can start to come in. 
So ultimately, two things um, benefit from a design system. It's to speed up workflow because we've not got multiple designers working on the same things and to manage brand consistency across the site. But design is not just about crafting UI products or even designing for the product experience. It's about creating that personal significance for our customers. So I'm sure many of the designers, and again, I'm talking to a lot of designers, and you may have seen a lot of these slides and Rich's presentations, but for the non-designer people, this is what we class as a UX hierarchy of needs. And then this basically is um, a way that we can gauge how we're doing within our um, design. So based on, Mas um, sorry, based on Maslow's theory around human um, motivations, he quite clearly states that you have to um, make sure that users are comfortable with the bottom end of this pyramid. And it's not until they're comfortable with that bottom end that we really start moving into that pleasurable and meaningful space. So I think from a business, we can all agree that we've got functionality down to a T. It's reliable. It's perfectly usable. But how do we start to encroach into that pleasurable and meaningful space? And this is where, if you can imagine a line drawn through the orange and the red bit, We've got designers and we've got UXers. These two really need to work harmoniously so that we're creating a bit more of a personal significance for our customers. So designing for UX means thinking user first. And basically it's about trying to think around a human-centered approach to a design problem. And ultimately, as designers, we're always battling off against these three things that you can see on the script screen. So as a designer, we want, want things to look beautiful. We want it to be desirable and add pleasure for the user. We also want it to have meaning and, and create empathy with the user. <coughs> but it also needs to be super usable and functional. And it's not until we've really nailed all three of those things that we can really start to move up that UX hierarchy of needs into that more meaningful and personable space. So how do we attach emotions and connect users to brands? Well basically when we're designing a product experience we need to keep these bullets in mind and we're designing to be memorable so we recognise and we're stood out against our competitors. We're clear and we're understandable so we're using really simple language. It's good looking and it grabs the attention, attention of others but also looks professional. And also it's enjoyable and people want to come back and use it again. But maybe not most importantly but that personal experience where people are just starting to really resonate with the brand and thinking, oh, yeah, I remember Money Supermarket for all of these reasons. And it's not until we're starting to really design emotively do we start to really embed that brand of Get Money Calm. And by tapping into these services, um, sorry, by tapping into these emotions, we really um, start to feed the ideas of engagement, loyalty and retention to our products and services. And I think that's just a really important thing to say because all those things equally will get us to that money calm experience. So just to bring the focus back to money supermarket and what we're currently doing to surface that get money calm. So at the beginning of the year, we <coughs> surfaced the new brand design with just the like reskin really of bonds colour palettes, typography, a little tweak to our illustration style and our iconography. But how do we better define what it means? How do we really start to get that feeling for our customers of Get Money Calm? And if we just think about personalisation for a second and the work that the personalisation team do around energy monitor, credit monitor and more recently the dashboard work and how that really starts to bring that, that design into that personal significance for the customer. 
So if we just look at the dashboard designs for a minute, which Steve's done a sterling job on, and I just worked on it very briefly, but it also taught me a lot about um, designing for the user. So if we look at this, and for those of you who aren't um, familiar with what the dashboard is, this is what we classed as a low engaged state. So this is somebody that um, is signed in, and we've designed it basically to enhance that, that signed in experience. But this low engaged user has only been on our site recently to look at latest quotes. So they've not currently engaged with credit monitor, car monitor, or energy monitor. So that, that state for them could potentially look quite bland or, oh, what are these things that I need to do? Do I need to, what, what are they? So we did some research, or should I say, Jason from the research team did some research around all of this state. So I just showed you the low engaged one. But it was basically, um, as a design team, we picked out some, some words to be able to um, nudge the user really into thinking what, how they felt and what they were understanding from the dashboard. And quite often some negativity came up. And it doesn't mean to say that they were negative around a particular area. I think that still needs to come out in the, um, in the learnings. But we can see that some of the words around busy, complex, overwhelming, confusing, we're more in that low engaged state of what I just showed you. So with that in mind, we just did a few more um, exploration designs to see how we could really define those states. And I think with just adding that bit of brand styling into those components, it really starts to create a narrative around each of those cards. So instead of maybe a user having to read all the, the the content to decipher what it is, which could potentially be the, the confusing element, or they might become a bit overwhelmed thinking, oh, they all look the same, what's the difference? It really starts to define each of those um, monitoring services. And at a glance, you can see the car monitor <coughs> is something to do with the car, just by adding in that, that illustration. So it becomes less confusing and a, a bit more of a less um, a bit more of a, a joined up user experience really. They can see exactly what their, their latest quotes are and all those other states might make them action a little bit more. <coughs> Another way we can um, embed the meaning and the brand in, is through storytelling. And storytelling is one of the best means of how we can engage with an audience and a product or brand, really. I just want to start off by talking a little bit around photography. So some of you may not recognise these designs. This was a bit of blue sky thinking that we did back in the summer. And it was mainly to focus around how we can embed photography into some of our journeys and to enhance some of our products. So as the saying goes, a picture's worth a thousand words. And I think that's absolutely evident. When we look at something, we totally engage with it and think, oh, I might have a bit of empathy. Or, um, for example, the visual on the left shows that um, we want somebody to engage with those monitoring services and we want people to be able to free up some time so they've got time to go out and explore in the car or they've got time to spend with their family because they're not thinking about those everyday mundane tasks of switching their, their finances or thinking about when their MOT is due or how much they could save. It's all monitored and done for them. So it's just by tapping into that, that empathy really, by showing some lifestyle photography on our website. And another way we can um, think about how users might interact a little bit better with our site and really start to um, lead users through a more calming experience is through motion and interaction design. So there's some examples that um, the guys have been working on through, um, <coughs> this particularly was done for the renter's journey. So if you just have a look at how this works, you can see that as part of that journey, they're selecting the things that they want to ensure. And by adding those 
items into the safe, I think it just really gives them confidence that they're the things that they want to ensure. It's that visual stimulants again. It's that reassurance that, oh yeah, I'm going through this journey. I can see the things that I'm putting, almost putting it in your basket. And it just engages that user a little bit more. It adds a bit more interest to the page. So by starting to use a bit of animation in some of our journeys, we can potentially take some of that anxiety away when doing, again, what could be classed as quite mundane tasks. And this is something that you might remember from Daniel's talk earlier in the year, where he talked about um, that motion of the heart rate and the resting beat, and please correct me if I'm getting this wrong, but it was all around... Um, <coughs> leave that one, we'll go back. But it's all around how um, emotion can really start to have that impact and make people feel calming. So that, that feeling of a resting heartbeat and somebody watching that as they're starting to look at their results might take that moment of calm. So especially when they're dealing with things like switching their energy, which for some users might potentially be a little bit um, stressful or people might experience anxiety around, just by seeing that might make them feel a little bit more um, able to deal with what, what they're processing. And last but not least, um, the lovely Jade designed a question stepper, which is a fantastic idea that um, the question steps that we can actually start um, processing that information and it just enables the user to be able to look at one question at a time um, before they move on to the next one. It helps them clarify what they're, they're um, doing, it helps them to take time to read it. They're not, um, they're, they're not thinking about how many questions they've got to answer, it's one at a time. It just again provides that bit of clarity around how they can really digest information in a, in a shorter snippet of, of, of um, time. And in case you missed anything of what I was saying, just to summarise, in order to create products and experience that create emotional value, we need to focus on designing products that create positive emotional connections with customers. The way our customers think, learn, solve problems, make decisions and simply consume information needs to be embedded into our product design. And regardless of what type of designers we are, product managers, marketeers or developers, every touch point with the customer becomes an opportunity to bring deeper meaning of getting calm to the lives of our users. Thank you.